out at HP Discover 2011, where SiliconAngle.com is checking out all the news around the web here. But we're live at HP Discover with the Cube, our flagship telecast, where we go to, to the events, go on the ground, talk to the smartest people, executives, bloggers, thought leaders, whoever has the smartest knowledge, we can extract and share that with you. That's our goal. And uh, we're here with David Scott and Carl Eschenbacher. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you, John. David Scott, Senior Vice President of the Storage Group, formerly the CEO of 3PAR. Great to be here, John. Thank the godfather you. of thin provisioning, which everyone copied. And uh, <laughs> Dinah here, what's next? And, and Carl, you're the co-president, recently part of the, the promotion of all, a new president, co-president role at VMware. That's accurate. Thank Welcome. You. you guys were having a meeting before you came on. Can you tell us what you were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> plans <laughs> plans yes and you guys know each other you guys are friends personal friends we are yeah, we I are so. yeah, yeah, I, you know we spend the occasional dinner with each other yeah. so this should be fun so VMware actually VMworld we read the cube there was our first big uh, production that we had kind of a continuous multi-day coverage and, and uh, Paul laid out his plans for what is essentially a cloud operating system from what we were analyzing it um, and you guys have, have a lot of plans involved and the ecosystem message was great, $15 of revenue for every dollar created from VMware. Uh, one, how's that going, Carl, and what's the update quickly from VMware? Yeah, so there's roughly about a $45 billion ecosystem that's uh, you know, been generated through VMware's cloud infrastructure platform, um, and that's because virtualization drives the convergence Change of all different technology. assets in the data center, and with convergence comes disruption. Uh, and that's why the ecosystem that surrounds VMware is so large, and one of our best partners in the industry is, is our friends here at HP, and it, it spans you know, more than a decade, and we're really excited about some of the announcements that have been made this week in joint partnership with HP, and the ecosystem is alive, it's vibrant, and uh, I think it will continue to grow as people look more and more at these converged infrastructures. So I was saying, uh, David, you, know, you guys were the doing thin provisioning before it was cool, and cloud kind of stuff before it was cool, and now everyone's copied that. So what's the three-par story with VMware? Because you guys, VMware is Switzerland, and although owned by EMC, um, has to deal with all the storage vendors like NetApp and others in HP. So, so what's the story here with three-par? Yeah, well, I interestingly enough, you know, uh, 3PAR and VMware had a really strong relationship from uh, when 3PAR was still an independent company. We did a lot of uh, joint work in, in terms of supporting kind of interfaces, APIs very early on. Uh, and that was really driven out of the fact that uh, both companies were looking at some joint target segments, particularly in the hosting service providers where you know, fundamentally the complete virtualized environment was what was, uh, of best of breed components, was what was differentiating us. In fact, I think it was about four years ago, uh, HP, 3PAR as an independent company, and VMware actually jointly announced one of the first kind of solution blueprints for the cloud, uh, and we named it 3CV. Um, so the relationship's been going on very tight uh, ever since that time, and it continues, obviously, uh, with 3PAR within the HP so fold. what's the reaction on the market, Carl, and you're in? I mean, VMware's out there, they're being independent, 3PAR has some good technology. Um, what's been the reaction on the market in terms of the 3PAR acquisition with HP and its impact to VMware in the relationship? Well, I think if you, you know, kind of following on what David was speaking about, everyone is looking at how to drive convergence in their data center, and, you know, uh, HP had a lot of good storage solutions, but they were looking for something that could take them to the next level and really provide multi-tenant cloud environments, and that's what the three-part acquisition has given HP. And VMware, yes, it's true, you, to your point earlier, John, we, we you know, are uh, you know, a company that has a majority shareholder in EMC, but at the same time, we also understand there's a vibrant ecosystem out there and people need choices, and uh, the relationship with 3PAR is, is as strong as ever. And as David said, sure. before there was probably any vertical stacks or any converged infrastructure that was even brought to market through this 3CV initiative of 3PAR, C-Class Blades, and VMware, we actually brought this to market uh, you know, almost four years ago, and there was a lot of success. And it may actually be what's driven all of us to really talk about virtual systems this week. So, that's, you know, so even four years ago, that's like, you know, decades ago, you know, in terms of you know, <laughs> Dog cloud <years>. time. I mean, <laughs> you know, just, talk, I mean just, yes. like, just last year, you guys transformed, I mean, VMware has transformed its business significantly, even in the past year, with under the Paul, the, the stack that he's laid out is very similar to what HP's talking about here. So what's changed in, in the marketplace relative to that proposition yeah. you just mentioned from four years ago? Uh, specific to the infrastructure layer, John? Or? Well, infrastructure layer and the marketplace. You've done some acquisitions at the top of the stack, so yeah. what's changed in the cloud relative to virtualization? You have Cloud Foundry out there, Cloud Foundry, 
yeah, specifically. Sure. I mean, that's hypervisor in the cloud. Some are saying the freemium model. Where you know is that is that uh, tell us what that's about? And <laughs> yeah, sure. So I mean, you know, this whole cloud word has become very pervasive in our industry, and everyone's using it. And I'm not sure anyone has a common definition. But the one thing we do know is that cloud, if if implemented the appropriate way, whether it's in a private or public setting, can reduce the cost for a customer to, to run their applications, uh, as well as to support their infrastructure. So VMware, while we've historically been focused on the infrastructure layer, uh, we've also started to take a look at how applications are written and really try to focus on delivering new, the new next generation frameworks to allow applications to be modernized, and we think there's a tight coupling between some of the things we've announced around Cloud Foundry, which is an open source developer community cloud, and what we're doing in the infrastructure, and those two shall converge over time as well. Is that just a like freemium model? I'm is that sorry? a freemium model? You give it away for free? It, it, the, cloud, the Cloud Foundry is being given away for free, um, and we actually have a sandbox that we stood up to allow developers to go and actually get access to it today. David, how is the impact above the infrastructure at applications? Obviously, you know, VMware recently bought um, a social, social company, so I think what, SocialCast was it recently? Yes, Obviously, you had Zimbra. Um, it's not a lot going on at the top of the stack in terms of apps, but there's a ton going on in mobile. What are you seeing on the infrastructure side that's happening? Um, again, you know, guys did thin provisioning. That was great, everyone copied that, you guys were leaders. So, wow, what I'm trying to get at is, what's next? Uh, what's the next big thing that, that you guys see that maybe others don't? Well, I, I, I think the next big thing is, is making resources kind of work together on a, across data centers, across metropolitan areas, and, and across long distance. Uh, it, it's an area that we talk about as federation uh, of, of the infrastructure. Uh, and actually, HP's had a, a, tr a tremendous head start in uh, leading scale-out software that is federated. Uh, in fact, another partner of, uh, of VMware's very early on was Left Hand Networks, which is now part of uh, HP, and that has a, a federated scale out software model and uh, has been one of the environments that really is tightly integrated with VMware to provide kind of long distance vMotion support across metropolitan areas. And we think that that capability peer-based uh, federation is going to be extremely important in all software architectures moving forward because the way you try and federate to join resor resources together, you got two choices. Are you going to put appliances in front of uh, your storage arrays, uh, as some uh, vendors would describe, or you're going to make it peer-to-peer? -peer. And we think the answer is peer-to-peer -peer federation, just like VMware's vMotion, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Is it marketplace ready for that? I mean, are we there? I mean, what inning are we in on that peer-to-peer? -peer? Because you know, some are saying there's a lot of white space, especially in the VMware stack, you know, because you guys are growing, and it's, it's ready. I mean, what's happening with that? I mean, what, what, what do you peg the, the, uh, the inning on this? You know, I, I think it's early stages right now, but uh, thin provisioning was early stages, yeah, and, yeah. and at the point when thin provisioning was early stages, yeah. people said, you yeah, are yeah. never going to ever want to do that. It's a crazy idea. Now everybody in the world uh, feels it's a must have, and yeah. I think you're going to see the, see the same thing in Federation. Carl, how does VMware keep up with the pace of change? I mean, you know, even just from VMworld, we were watching you guys, you know, see the acquisitions you know, is, is, is okay, but like, you, know, you have a lot going on in the middleware on the platform side. So above the infrastructure, the platform side, you've got a lot of white spaces and there's a lot going on with the big, the big vendors. You know, obviously Oracle, other vendors like SAP have different approaches, you know, the closed and open. Um, this peer-to-peer -peer really talks about open. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what's going on in the platform level? Yeah, sure. So, you know, as I said earlier, the, the Cloud Foundry announcement we made a couple months ago was a really critical announcement for VMware because it put us in the forefront of how people are going to generate and build and write their next generation of applica applications. And two years ago now, almost two years ago, we made a, a critical acquisition for us of SpringSource, which is the industry-leading Java J2EE framework that's out there today. So we see a very tight coupling, as I said earlier, John, between the infrastructure and the applications. The infrastructure needs to become much more automated to support the rapid requirements of the users and the next generation of applications that are being developed. So we believe as we move up stack and focus on these new frameworks that historically haven't been part of our DNA, we believe we're going to see people start to say, wow, I'm writing now in a VMware framework in an open source type of uh, cloud and we're also going to then deploy that in a virtualized appliance on top of a highly virtualized infrastructure like what we're doing with virtual systems. So we yeah. see the two coming together. Uh, and in fact, it's very complementary. I mean, I mean HP's uh, recently announced uh, virtual systems is all about tightening up and providing kind of best of breed functionality, integrated server networking storage yeah. stack that's tied in with the virtualization 
layer, infrastructure layer and the applications beyond that. And, and uh, we also announced the cloud system uh, approach, which is uh, allowing people a, a complete infrastructure to, to build out their own private clouds. And the great thing is that you're able to upgrade from virtual system to this new cloud system world, uh, leveraging kind of technologies both from HP and VMware. And the other thing I'd add, John, that, that we just announced jointly with HP last week is, you know, a lot of people historically have looked at a, a converged and virtualized infrastructure for more infrastructure type applications. We're seeing a rapid adoption of tier one applications moving on top of mm -hmm. this environment. And last week we made a uh, announcement uh, with, with HP and SAP that the converged infrastructure with vSphere uh, can now support and is certified to support SAP applications. So you can see us moving up the stack and looking at the heavier weight uh, mission critical tier one applications to run on this environment. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I mean yes, we were at SAP Sapphire, and then the message there was very clear. I mean, obviously mobility, but the data, they didn't really talk about big data like everyone was hyping it up. They were really talking more about, almost in an assumptive way, fast data, and that's the term we called it. They want the information really fast. So, you know, they were talking about uh, virtualization, and we were trying to get out uh, some questions, we didn't really find many customers to talk to there that could answer the question, but you know, how many SAP environments are truly virtualized in production mm -hmm. outside of the test and dev? Are you seeing more of the big app guys like the SAPs virtualizing in this yeah. environment? Yeah, clearly. Um, again, you know, if you Can look you do at- percentages like pie uh, chart? I don't know, you know the percentages off the top of my head, John, but I know a, a large you know, percentage of our customers are running databases in general on top of a virtualized, you know, uh, converged infrastructure. So we do definitely see that adoption happen. And in fact, you know, and as you'll see in a, you know, a video that Paul will, uh, you know, that David will run on Paul, it talks about, you know, how there's, you know, now more virtualized workloads being deployed than physical servers. And uh, this year alone, many analysts predict that there will be more applications virtualized and it's been virtualized in the last five years combined. So it's not if you're going to virtualize, it's when and how fast and how can you take advantage of these new converged infrastructures to really focus on business agility. You know, we, know, we at SiliconAngle.com, where you know, we try to cover all the tech innovation. We like to pontificate a lot, but also speculate. But one of the things we've been speculating on is the internet operating system for years, you know, and, and uh, now we talk about the cloud is so, really rocking and rolling in terms of hype and reality. Steve Jobs was talking about iCloud, so you know, that's going to make cloud even more mainstream in terms of vernacular. Uh, but it, you know, we also cover Microsoft, and you know, we talk about Microsoft in the old sense, and they're trying to get back on track. But is there really a cloud operating system? Because you, know, you have Paul Moritz, who knows that business, I mean, operating system, he worked at Microsoft. And you know, we, at VMworld last year, there was a cloud operating system kind of pitch. I mean, it was, he didn't say cloud operating systems, what we were saying. So I'd love to get your perspectives, David and Carl. What do you think about uh, the cloud operating system concept? I mean, it's, an, it's a systems play you mentioned in our, our last uh, interview. I, I, I think the definition of what a cloud operating system will be is, is the question mark. People are having difficulty defining what the cloud is, let alone what a cloud operating system is going to be. So, uh, you know, I think there's plenty of room for innovation, and, I, uh, and that's at the heart of uh, what is making the industry so excited at, at this point in time. Point. You're getting this tremendous uh, transformation from kind of traditional IT to the delivery of IT as a service, and all of the building blocks have to change. Uh, VMware was very early on understanding that kind of the virtualization the server environments was going to have to be one of those elements of change. At 3PAR, we recognized that you had to change the storage to do the same thing. The operating system environment is clearly kind of one of the next areas to, to be focused on. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the same thing, David. I mean, the, the industry is going through a radical transformation here, and uh, existing operating systems as we once have known them will you know probably have to migrate and yeah. take a different role um, especially when you look at it from applications and how they're being developed uh, and if you think about it if there's more applications being deployed in virtual environments and physical environments there's an abstraction layer now called virtualization with things that you know HP is doing that actually becomes if you will the underlying architecture for service delivery so it's not a hardware delivery it's a virtualized delivery taking advantage of highly optimized infrastructure that it, yeah. for example HP is providing yeah i mean we i just find it interesting that you know the subsystems of storage compute and you know servers 
HP has under one roof now. So yeah. you think about what we've seen. With and networking. <laughs> and networking. Yeah. So you know, we think about what you guys have done with three parts since the acquisition. I mean, you got some systems tools in there, and you guys are expanding with virtualization. So I just we're just watching that area closely. So I just wanted to get your take on that. I'm getting the getting the hook in my ear here. So I know you guys got to go. But final question. Um, this is John Furrier from SiliconAngle.com. We're inside the cube at HP Discover with Carl and uh, David from uh, HP and VMware. Final question for you guys is. Um, more of a philosophical one, so you can take your corporate hat off and, and uh, go personal here. What's the future going to look like in, in five to 10 years, the world we're going to live in, society? Obviously virtualization and some of the technology you guys are building is going to change a lot of things like how we interact, how we govern, how we, how we do things with mobile and others. So what's your view of how this tech will translate uh, people's lives and society and the technology industry, whatever, it's a free, Free question. Okay, so I'll take my corporate hat off, um, <laughs> although I didn't have one. I'm plus it would mess my hair up, David. <laughs> so, I wouldn't do that. Um, so I think, uh, you know, every decade or so, our industry goes through tectonic shifts, and we're in the next tectonic shift to cloud computing. And the underlying architecture for cloud computing is virtualization with converged infrastructures. And I actually believe what's going to happen are, you know. We're being uh, driven by a consumer world and it's bleeding into the enterprise, so it's going to be about any device getting access to information and applications real time in a very secure environment. So we, as IT, right, need to find a way to try to consumerize the infrastructure to make it very consumable, drive the cost out, and make it all done in a self-service way where the consumer is getting access to serv services from IT and IT isn't the bottleneck any longer. That's yeah. what I believe we're, we're moving towards. I think Carl's spot on. I, I, I think as you go out 10 years, it's going to be increasingly difficult to separate uh, one's professional life from one's personal yeah. life. You're already starting to see that, that privacy to, to the parts of your personal life that you want to keep private, but, but it will be a, a blended, melded yeah. world. Okay, well, thanks for coming in. David Scott, Senior Vice President of uh, HP Storage. Carl Eisenbach, Co-President of VMware. Obviously, storage is a big part of the cloud operating system. Lots changing. The software environments are growing and, and evolving. Uh, thanks a lot for coming in theCUBE. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Thanks, Carl. John, thank you. David, Great thank to work you. with you, Carl. Okay. Right. Thanks. We're here.